Hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for another installation of SAR Artists Live. My name is Alicia Poon. I am the director of the Indian Arts Research Center. So while we're waiting for Jason to join us, um, I just wanted to remind you that through the months of August and September, we will be presenting SAR Artists Live in partnership with Native American Art Magazine and Swaya's Indian Market, with additional support from the Atata Foundation and King Galleries. We are so grateful for their support. So tonight we have a clay artist and printmaker joining us. Jason Garcia. I'm just waiting for him to uh, click onto our stream and we'll be with uh, you all shortly. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that um, once we get going, um, please feel free to ask any questions that you have. We want this to be a really informal conversation and um, please feel free to say hello and to um, yeah, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to share them in the comment box at the bottom of your screen. So coming up in the next um, week or two, we have a couple of events. Uh, next Monday, October 7th, we have um, Alina Mendez, and she's going to be speaking about subsidized labor, the Bracero program, in the Imperial Valley, Mexicali borderlands, 1942 to 1969. Following that, after a whirlwind of August and September's live streams, we're actually gonna take a little bit of a break and return on Monday, October 12th at 2 p.m. And our Curator of Education, Felicia Garcia, is gonna be chatting with our 2015 King Fellow and Danae Weaver, Marlo Catoni on SER Artists Live. Um, so we have a couple of really exciting events coming up the next two Mondays, and I hope you'll check out our website for more information. That's serweb.org. So I saw Jason um, join us. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get him to here. Hi, Jason. How are you doing? Pretty good, Alicia. How's everything? Good, good. H happy Monday. Happy week. <laughs> happy Monday. <laughs> so um, I know you've been super busy. Um, mm -hmm. I've been following you on Instagram, but um, I was wondering if you could tell everyone, you know, what have you been working on and where? And can we take a sneak peek? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, good evening, everybody. My name is Jason Garcia. I am from the um, Pueblo of Santa Clara and coming live and direct to you from Old Cooping Studio located in Hapo Wingia, aka Santa Clara Pueblo, New Mexico. And um, I am a printmaker and ceramic artist and also, um, let's see, it was the 2007 Dubin Fellow at mm -hmm. uh, Indian Arts Research Center at SAR and have been involved with SAR and Indian Arts Research Center on different, um, I guess, capacities as far as working with different uh, interns, helping them with their exhibitions, helping staff with uh, different um, projects that they've been doing. Been a uh, speaker several times also. So, mm -hmm. you know, always a uh, fun and enjoyable uh, experience to get back to uh, there in Santa Fe at the SAR there. Um, so as far as what I'm doing currently, uh, it's kind of interesting being that, you know, this whole year is your uh, COVID uh, <laughs> yeah, social put distancing, a wrench in things, quarantine. Right? <laughs> yeah, I put a little, a little monkey wrench in things slightly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the last uh, physical show that I had was the um, Heard Museum Indian Art um, uh, Fair in Phoenix, Arizona. And then pretty much after after that, everything pretty much came to, you know, a stop with uh, cancellations of Native Treasure Show, mm -hmm. uh, Santa Fe Indian Market. I had a uh, exhibition with Axel Contemporary Gallery that was supposed to happen 
uh, with the collaboration show with uh, Mr. Vicente Teyes. Mm-hmm. is a uh, Santero from Albuquerque. Yeah. And we had a uh, collaboration show that was going to be happening in uh, at the opening at the weekend of Spanish market and then ending at the uh, weekend of Indian market. So kind of up for a month and traveling throughout Santa Fe for a month. That was canceled. Um, let's see what else. And then there's a couple other uh, gallery exhibitions, uh, group exhibitions, and those close. So pretty much just continuing to, continue to work on my studio practice. And um, I've had a couple small, small, um, I guess, commissions for institutions as far as like coloring pages, coloring books. Mm-hmm. I did a, a couple illustrations for the Pole Museum in Pewaukee for mm-hmm. their uh, mask project. So they have one that they just put up uh, outside the Bowl Museum yesterday, or it was going up on, was it yesterday? Yeah, yes, yesterday or Saturday, Saturday afternoon, it mm-hmm. went up uh, outside the museum there. So it looks pretty nice. And uh, printing, working on clay, um, working on my studio house also here in the Pueblo. So, you know, there's lots of projects and things, you know, we're we're doing as we social distance and stay isolated and semi-quarantined and all that so (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah and what has your work been like what has it changed your process or what have you been working on uh as far as process changing uh hmm, the good question i think my process has pretty much remained the same Mm -hmm. as far as uh materials and things um I think part of some process that I I was doing was um, uh, early, this is like maybe early February, uh, I was working with a model. So we were working on it on, you know, collaboration of images for a couple corn maiden images. So we started on one and we got a couple um, solid images for clay, clay pottery, and then also for um, a couple prints as well, a couple drawings. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of put the damper with the Pueblo, uh, going down on, on a shutdown, you know, mm-hmm. the, um, Pueblo was closed to non-residents and non, uh, tribal members. So that kind of, um, so that was one thing that happened. Um, as far as my clay work, as far as my print work, it's pretty solitary. So I didn't really have any, uh, problems with it changing, um, my work, uh, I was also supposed to have a show at Echo. Well, I did have the show at Echo Mano mm-hmm. in uh, Sa- Santa Fe. And, you know, it was the typical gallery show with a gallery opening and things like that. Yeah. But uh, without the gallery exhibition opening, so we did a virtual opening where we did like what we did the live stream of the gallery. Uh-huh. And then pretty much every week I turned in um, – new work throughout the week. They're mostly pen and ink drawings. So mm-hmm. about every every week or so, I'd turn in about five to 10 new drawings. So that was kind of nice that, you know, the, the show was uh, real fluid and things like that and constantly changing and evolving and things. So yeah, um, yeah so I, I wouldn't say that it hasn't really put a, a, a cramp on my productivity per se, but more so I'm, I guess, socializing and and being in the social environment of of the gallery or the art exhibition scene, I guess you would say, so art market <laughs> scene. So, mm-hmm. so we have a few comments here. So, mm-hmm. uh, Ian Kuli, he says, "Aloha, Jason, mm-hmm. and go Badgers." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Joanne and Bob Balzer have a wonderful question, and that's, "Did you expand your virtual presence with all the cancellations of the live shows?" I think more so, I, I would say, in terms of virtual presence, um, again, working with uh, Frank Rose of Echo Mano, we did a, a podcast where, you know, I called into the podcast. Normally, I would have driven in to Santa Fe and mm-hmm. been in the gallery. We would have done it that way. Uh, we did our opening night that way. Um, mm-hmm. So th- those are, are – and then I did a, a couple other – uh, live web broadcasts, I guess, podcasts online on Instagram, or uh, we did a Zoom meeting with the uh, Georgia O'Keeffe Gallery as well, too. So, you know, mm-hmm. those, those would have all been in person and things like that. 
Um, and then uh, Vicente and I worked on a collaborate, collaborative piece. It was uh, uh, called uh, La Malinche y los Matachines. And so that was a wood piece um, using the, um, mineral pigments and things like that that we had painted. And I think it's still currently up at Echo Amado on Canyon Road. Okay. And uh, so that was kind of interesting where, again, normally Vicente and I would have most likely worked in the same space, but it was just really where I went down to Albuquerque, picked up the pieces, the work, returned my, to my studio, worked on it for about a month, and then took it back to him. And then he, he finished it up, and then we delivered it to the gallery. And on Friday, we did, were able to have a little um, you know, live stream uh, closing broadcasts and things like that. So again, you know, everything that would have been per in person just switched over to the live uh, webcast, Instagram stories, live feeds and things like that. So a little bit different, you know, but uh, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it hasn't necessarily put a, like you say, it's put a wrench in it, but it hasn't hindered. It hasn't stopped anything from, from happening. So we're yeah. still working around it. So fantastic that's amazing mm -hmm. um, I just want to remind the audience that if you have any questions feel free to ask mm -hmm. um, but I have a question for you so mm -hmm. um, I know you've been you have been working and you have been productive during the time mm -hmm. that we are in at the moment what has been inspiring you and your work these days mm. I think I, th I think just you know the, there's the I guess cancellations, post moments of everything, feast days, um, and and I guess looking at social media and seeing how um, that's been a hard. It, it's different. It's different from what we've known, you know. At least in our collective memory, you know, mm -hmm. maybe if there's someone a hundred years older, you know, they lived through Spanish influenza or the great depression yeah. or certain things okay. like that, you know, um, tragic events and in, in that affected the entire world. So, you know, this is kind of um, where we're at right now, but using our, our cultural stories our Tewa stories, um, you know, the, despite the fact that we're not able to celebrate publicly, you know, our feast days and our ceremonies and things like that, we're still able to, um, uh, we're still able to practice or we're still able to, you know, hum the same songs or sing the same songs or nobody's saying you can get, you can't get dressed up in your Indian clothes or, mm -hmm. um, or celebrate, you know, St. Clair's feast day in, yeah. in a small manner, whether it's just, you know, cooking something small for your family and, you know, visiting, um, certain shrines, certain mountains, certain things like that. So, you know, there's, there's, you kind of appreciate sometimes, uh, without without those things um, being there uh, publicly celebrated, maybe you you understand it more privately and things like that. So that that's kind of where I'm drawing a lot of my inspiration from. And then family and you know sharing um, experiences with them and things like that too. So and then mm -hmm. also web web broadcasts. I think I've talked more using FaceTime than I have ever. You know, so that's kind of interesting <laughs> yes, uh, as well, too. You know, I'm just usually either text or call me, but now, you know, we use FaceTime a little bit more. So Yeah, I don't think I've uh, ever used FaceTime or Zoom more than I have now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, I was wondering if you might be interested in showing us some of what you've been working on. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, I kind of saw there was a couple little comments on the bottom there about... Uh, Oops. Yeah, we kind of. I'll pull Ooh, out yeah. the, the. So this is the most recent piece that I've just finished this past um, week. It is um, corn maiden number twenty six, mm -hmm. and it is a uh, seriographed hand pulled print, and the image or the paper size is um, nineteen by twenty four inches, and then it's uh, the image is sixteen by twenty. So I haven't really made anything this large in my studio. It's usually a lot smaller. And uh, this is a 10, 10 color proof or a 10 color um, uh, print, serigraph print. So I had a lot of fun with it and, um, you know, creating the image. It was actually originally done in a uh, tile 
And then um, uh, recently it was on the cover of, um, of Native Art uh, Magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, a, wait, a, can you pull out a box? There's a box magazines in the back. So it was on the cover of the, um, of Native Art Magazine. And uh, it was the Santa Fe issue. So, you know, I had a couple of requests as far as, you know, uh, people were asking, can we get, uh, do you have prints of that particular magazine? So, you know, I just created another print off of it. So, um, and then as far as like the process and things, if you follow my Instagram page, it's says Okoop In Studio. So it's O-K-U-U-P-I-N dot studio. Uh, you can see the process as far as cutting the ruby lith for the piece. And then, um, so all the colors are all individually separated using uh, a ruby lith film. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the screens are all individually burned and then each color is printed um, uh, on the paper and things like that. So, so that's kind of more one of my, um, I, I would say my ro most uh, recent piece. Can you and show it I again and lift it up a little? I think we missed the bottom. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's... Yeah, there you go. Pull it that better. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Can you so explain I just finished... what's going on in the background a little bit? Oh, so in the background, there's, um, you know, the Kiva, mm -hmm. Pueblo, contemporary Pueblo background with the Kiva, and then another building, and then with the um, satellite dish, and then the TV antenna as well. So uh, our patron, Saint St. Clair of Assisi, uh, we celebrate her pat uh, her patronage on uh, August 12th of each year. And St. Clair is the patron saint of uh, television, the blind uh, embroiderers. So I usually use the symbol of television in, in a lot of my work. Mm -hmm. And then also on the other side, another kiva, and then the corn, corn maiden, you know, doing the selfie. And then she's got her eye corn there. And then just to <laughs> kind of just to play on on fabrics and you know, exclusive and with a mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton uh, print scarf. So, you know, just, just playing with a lot of uh, different things as well, too. And then I also have a, um, I can grab a clay tile that I have. Let me grab it. And so the clay tiles is more what I'm more, I guess you would say, more known for in that sense. Um, so this is one of the clay tiles that I have here, which is the, um, it's uh, entitled Amaretto Love. Mm -hmm. And it's a um, Hopi Maiden. And again, she's kind of got the Kiva in the background with the uh, television antenna in the back there. And then sipping on the Dutch Brothers coffee as well. And then I usually typically uh, put the rain cloud in my pieces as well. So that was a lot of fun. Ian and then on the back, I have, uh, you know, like the, uh, you know, influenced by social media as well with <laughs> different hashtags of Dutch Brothers, hashtag Dutch Brothers, hashtag coffee love, hashtag love coffee, and hashtag coffee. So. And then I typically sign my work with uh, my Tewa name, which is Old Kupin, which is the uh, Sandia Mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a lot of fun with it. And then kind of exploring also um, Pueblo, uh, Pueblo embroidery and things like that or, or weaving techniques. And, and, you know, so I typically are lately in the past couple of years, I've been more uh, showing the um, traditional style of um, the weaving in the pieces. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the uh, old indigo blue and then also on the, on the corn maiden uh, print, you know, she's kind of got that blue, blue tint on top of it as well. Mm -hmm. And what are you using to create those colors? Uh, so the colors on the, on the clay tiles are all uh, locally sourced or pretty much locally sourced um, uh, mineral pigments.
yeah, so I don't know if there's any other questions. Um, so, and then it's all traditionally fired outdoors as well, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Ian is saying mine, and he's saying it would go perfect with his big kahuna burger tile. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amy is saying she wants an icorn. Um, mm -hmm. Hi. And um, there's lots of comments about how beautiful that piece is. There's a lot of hearts mm -hmm. coming through. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, one of our current interns, Shandine, um, is asking, what advice would you have for a young Native artist? Mm, I would say keep working. Um, as I always used to tell my son and my kids, you know, in terms of how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just keep working and keep, keep creating. And, uh, you know, some days you don't feel like drawing and other days, you know, the, 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 that, that, um, creative energy is there and you just kind of flow with it and just ride the wave and things like that. But, uh, you know, don't give up so easily, you know, a part of being an artist is, is, dealing with and and accepting rejection that's that's a big part of it as well too so, um mm -hmm. and and again just get your name out there and apply for different um opportunities and um like i said just create that's really about it so i think that's good and get to know and and, and networking also networking is a big part of it too as well as um, getting to know other artists, artists that aren't necessarily native artists, um, other ethnicities, other um, media and things like that. Mm -hmm. School also plays a big part of it in, this, uh, in it as, as Jason, you're breaking up a little. I'm not sure if you can hear me. I think I can, I think we're good now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I went out for a second there. Um, <laughs> technology isn't always <laughs> the best either, the, which, we are, which we are learning to deal with as well. Yeah. Too. In these Welcome times of the COVID. the digital era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's a brave new world. Yeah. Um, uh, not too sure where I left off or where I froze at. But. I think you were just beginning to talk about uh, education and then you kind of oh, yeah, came uh -huh. back in with your BA. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, education also plays, plays a part in it as well, too. Um, and I, I was saying that I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of New Mexico in photography, and then also Master of Fine Arts in printmaking from University of Wisconsin. And um, so I think those those experiences play a big part of it, of um, getting outside of your comfort zone and growing as an artist and studying with different um, professors. And then also, you know, networking with your students. Some of them may be um, emerging artists and other times, you know, they're they're already established and things like that. So, you know, you're you're all um, helping one another to mm -hmm. um, become better artists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, oh, we have a lot of heart, more hearts coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and then Meredith had a question about um, maybe your process. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about the process of your tiles a little bit or mm. if you had any materials that you might be able to show us. Um, I really didn't do that. I don't really have anything in process. I've been kind of, you know, the, the, you kind of working on, on uh, a pros project or, or a mm -hmm. piece. And then once you're finished, then you're like, oh, good, I'm done with it. Uh, let's put it away start cleaning the studio and get ready for new new projects and things so i don't really have any um work per se in in progress per se but um and then same thing with materials i don't i don't really have anything out so sorry mm -hmm. about that but um as far as my uh as far as like the clay tiles and and the pottery you know i'm using um uh traditional tewa clay from santa clara pueblo 
and then it's mixed with the volcanic ash temper and then the um the the piece is is uh hand formed you know it's a tile so you know it's pretty thin and mm-hmm. then i usually uh use my hand um to flatten out the tire tile on a canvas board and then i usually like to leave um you know on on the piece of the the tile you can might be able to see like some type of surface indentations from my hand i don't know if it's the lighting's horrible on the you know computers and technology and there's all that in there but um you know you can kind of see there's some um the texture of the tile it's not perfectly square and things like that um and then it's sanded fired uh painted and then it's fired outdoors uh, mm-hmm. in a traditional manner and things like that and then um typically displayed um in a in a in an acrylic um stand so that that's pretty much my process i would say um you know traditional materials tr- traditional um processes techniques and things like that so that's fantastic Mm -hmm. um yeah and there's some comments about the the cat squealing going on in the background (laughs) apologize i have Uh i'm fostering some kittens and i Mm -hmm. live in a very small space so there's Mm -hmm. nowhere else for them to go (laughs) Mm -hmm. um felicia was asking are there any mediums that you haven't worked with um that you're curious about experimenting experimenting with in the future um some things that I explored in grad school were neon and I still want to do a couple more pieces in neon as well too. The, the, I did about four, four pieces in neon for my graduate show at uh university of Wisconsin. And essentially it was like, you know, with this, with a line of the, um, of the building and the ladder and the satellite dish. And then I had another one that was um, like shaped like a, uh, uh, it was the landscape of, a uh, Catholic church, and then another one was like a um, uh, ancestral pueblo or ancestral uh, Tewa village, and mm-hmm. so th- those were. Um, I-, I would say they're more like just highlights as far as um, as far as uh, the building and things like that. So this is actually one of them here. So the neon light that I had was it's kind of pretty horrible to see as far as. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Like that, uh-huh. uh-huh. So you can. Get, so that was the shape of of you know the 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 neon and things like that and that. Um, so I have four of those, but le- neon doesn't travel very well. So mm-hmm. um, so that that was one um, medium that I I was exploring, and it's a whole um, different language, a whole different world, a whole different medium, and things like that. But I I would like to try it again. And um, I also worked on an animation project with the um, with uh, Nina Sanders, who's mm-hmm. Upsalaga for the Upsalaga Warrior and Women's uh, Exhibition at the Field mm-hmm. Museum. So we had worked on the uh, creation story, and um, I'm sure we can probably figure out the link for a Venmo or uh, not Venmo uh, Vimeo um, Vimeo um, uh, film that has the actual. Uh, creation story so i had created the storyboards Mm -hmm. and then with assistance from the um field museum staff they animated it and then uh it was narrated um by nina um, in upsalaga with subtitles and things like that so i think more animation is something that i like to um do i can't think of any mediums that i've never tried probably the only thing I haven't used is maybe like blood or something or, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> I don't know, glass, <laughs> not, glass is neon, you know, um, mm-hmm. but maybe, maybe something in glass, like uh glass blowing. I, di- I didn't have the opportunity to um, do any glass blowing at school. Um, mm-hmm. They had, they had a hot shop, uh, a glass shop there also. Mm-hmm. But um, wasn't just I was just focused on, on my printmaking and and trying to get my exhibition done in time for, um, in time for my MFA show. So mm-hmm. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe we'll see you at one of the nearby uh, glass studios in the area. Yeah, uh, a few of the- <laughs> Jack- yeah, there is. Uh-huh. 
Um, so we're kind of heading in at the 630 time frame. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Mm -hmm. So we'll just kind of um, go through a few more questions and then I'll let you go. And mm -hmm. um, but um, there was a quick question um, about the tile piece, I think, is it, if it was kiln fired. Was that one kiln fired? Uh, no, it's a traditional outdoor firing process. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then I think my QB Nader is saying hello. And our Sky T asks, have you ever considered trying to make a seriograph ser uh, ink made of natural pigments? I haven't. And shout out to Sky, who's also a fellow printmaker from Koppel as well. Um, I haven't tried it. I know I, I keep saying I want to try it mainly because um just to see how 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 it's going to work um for that you need like a larger mesh screen so and then that the clay has to be pretty fine uh i i haven't experimented with it so i mean that is one something that i do do want to do but also um i would probably have to create a pigment made from mineral pigments specific to printmaking. So I'd have to figure out what my binder will be and all those things. So, but I mean, it's totally do doable. So mm -hmm. maybe, uh, maybe when you're in Santa Clara again, Sky will collaborate and pull a print using mineral pigments. So, well, we're, wait we're waiting for that response from Sky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ian says, you'll okay. help you fine grind. Um, this guy says let's do it okay sounds uh, good yeah there's there's a couple <laughs> of artists that i've been following on instagram too where mm -hmm. they're um uh making their pigments watercolor pigments and things like that also mm -hmm. uh from uh pigments that they're finding on the roadside or mm -hmm. you know different areas so a lot of it's really just experimentation and things like that and um also working with vicente you know of, of you know sharing mineral pigments with him and things like that and seeing what um techniques um you know the santeros use and things like that so again it's all, all experimentation and sharing um tricks and trade tricks of the trade secrets things like that so yeah mm -hmm. and so the last question we have for you is um if folks want to support you where can they find you you can find me on my website at okupin.com that's a o-k-u-u-p-i-n.com uh, and then also on Facebook and on Instagram at uh, Okup In Studio, and uh, it, my I guess handle is okuu dot pin dot studio. So those are like the best best places. But Instagram is pretty. Um, I, I would say probably that's the best source to see what I'm working on and inspiration, uh, music, food, everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. in, in the studio so great well thank you so much jason yeah, thank you and so much fun chatting with you mm -hmm. um we'll get all the links down um in the description for those of you who missed mm -hmm. um a few moments at the beginning um you can listen to the full recording um, on our instagram live page we'll also have it up on youtube over the next couple of days and um yeah, join us for our upcoming programs um, the upcoming two Mondays. Just check out our website um, for information about the talks by um, Alina Mendez and the next artist uh, live with Marlo Cotoni. So um, everyone is saying thank you. And um, Jason is giving, uh, Jacob is giving big hearts. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you everybody for tuning in and all your questions and things like that. And if you do have any more questions, you know, feel free to, um, you know, I'll probably put something on my, on my story on Instagram if you had any questions or if you missed and you know, I'll, I'll more than happily answer them. So thank you again and have a good night and stay safe and keep wearing your masks and keep washing your hands. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank Bye. you. Thanks. Blessings. Bye. <laughs>